Well, welcome to the Norfolk Broads. A first time for me in 35 years, I know, better late than never, but today is a beginner's slash idiot's guide to perch fishing on a river. Now, I've done a little bit of lure fishing over the last couple of years, so I am your beginner slash I am your idiot, but I get a lot of questions when I do catch the odd fish about how I'm doing it and what I'm doing, and actually, I'm quite embarrassed to not have the answers. So this is where Kevin Cox comes in, because Kevin is an international, probably one of the best in the business. And today, as I'm learning, hopefully you can be learning as well. So Kev, I'm in your capable hands. What is the plan? The plan is, hopefully, catch a few perch. Yep. Um, like yourself, Dean, I've never been to, to the broad, so I've never fished the broad, so it's a first for me as well. Right. Um, yep, done lots of lure fishing, but... Um, Lure fishing's probably got a few more finer details than a lot of people realise. So it's not just a chuck it and chance it sort of job. That's uh, where I come in. <laughs> lots of different techniques, lots of different presentations. Yep. So, um, you know, I'm sure everybody that's watching knows that you've done shed loads of fishing, but not loads of lure fishing. So hopefully we can hone them skills a little bit today yep. and um, catch a few fish. And hopefully everyone can learn a few things as well. Yeah. Location, hardware, what to go in the tackle shops and buy. And hopefully, what I'm not, not to buy. And what not to I've got a box full of what not to buy, to be fair. Um, and hopefully, I'm not just a gilly. Let's hope so. Let's do it. If we just pull over for a minute, as we've done, just have a quick look at what we're using. Um, so what, what have you what, brought with you today? Well, let me, let me show you what I've got, right? Now, I got this predominantly for a bit of perch fishing, bit of bass fishing, bit of pike fishing. So I think it's a decent all-rounder. Probably yep. a bit heavy for perch, a bit light for pike, perfect for sort of bass. Um, it's a Xander Pro. It's sort of, not budget, but an entry level. And it's a 7 to 28 gram. Yep, so the Prism um, 7 to 28. It's good as gold, probably for my liking, just a little bit heavy for the perch fishing. Yeah. yeah. So I've brought some other rods today. We've got a 2 to 10, which I'm sure if you feel that, you'll feel yeah, very, much. very light. Might be, again, I don't know this venue, but there's a fair volume of water coming through. Yeah. So it might be just a little bit on the light side. Um, but if it is, this is probably my go-to perch rod would be right. a, a 3 to 14 gram. So I know it only sounds like we're talking about grams, yep. one or two grams here and there, but it really does make all the difference for being able to present a bait and fish in quite small hooks and well, jig heads to be able to feel what's going that's on. That's the difference. If you check out my lure box, I've got yep. 7 and 10 gram jig heads. Yep. And that's the first thing I noticed with your gear. It's much more refined and finessed. So yep. working those smaller jig heads on this type of rod, would be very difficult. Um, so if you're gonna do it, perch-wise, anything between sort of like the three and 14 gram would be yep. what you're looking for. Yep, definitely. And certainly on a venue like this, you know, that it is quite a big river. And like I say, it's just the volume of water that's coming through. Yep. Maybe the, the two to 10 might be a bit light, but we'll, we'll work out as we go. Okay. Um, so for me, this is what we should start with, which I think, um, you know, you should start with yourself. All right, perfect. So I don't know the venue, so we've got, quite a bit of sort of um, flood water coming through at the moment. It's what quite- would be your, What would be your sort of go-to starting method? Because there's lots of ways you can lure fish for perch. Yep. And generally my box is jig heads. Yep. That's it. That's perfect. You know, and I'm not that refined yet to understand yep. what to do and where. So I'll keep it super basic and super simple. And I've got various different size jig heads, various different size shads and various colors. And and I just lob a few out here and there and I twitch them about and I, I wind them in. And that's what I'm here to try and refine my yep, methods today. Yep. But would you say I'm missing out by going in initially with something as simple as a jig head and a shad? Or would that be a decent way of exploring a swim? No, definitely. That's the way that I would do it personally. Right, Start okay. off with, I mean, I'm going to put five grams on here, which right. might not be heavy enough. I might have to go up to seven. Yep. But initially... I've no idea what we've got on the bottom, really. Okay. Um, we do have the, the technology on the boat, but if we set that aside, we've got no idea what's down there. So if we go straight in with 10 grams, for argument's sake, mm -hmm. and there's tree structure or there's lots of weed, all we're going to do is in our first 10 minutes lose half our Snake box up. of jigs. And, yeah. and you know, whereas if we start slightly lighter, yep. we can still feel the bottom, or hopefully we can. If it's pushing too much, then we need to, you know, up the jig head size. But yeah. 
it'll give us a good indication of what's there because we can feel if it's coming down nice and soft then we've got sort of like a muddy bottom but if we get a good solid return we've either got gravel or mussel beds or if we start to get into um, trees or any of the reeds or yeah. any structure like that then we can switch over then to um to like a texas rig or to a cheb rig which i'd prefer which right. is with a slightly different hook so it's um it's shaped different so it can be fished weedless yeah. where the very point of the of the hook is just nicking the skin yeah. of the lure yeah. so um quite often you can almost throw it through that reed structure and yeah. you can get your bait back. You throw an open jig in there, the chances are yeah. you're tackling up again. A lot of my bass fishing is done weedless in fairness, but what I always fell into the trap of is just fishing the jig head and the shads and feeling like I'm doing something wrong because there's so many videos out there like suggesting things and I'm yep. like, I should be doing this, I should be doing that. And actually, as much as I know I was fishing too heavy, I feel like I was probably going in with a reasonable method. Yeah, so not, that's, yeah, yeah I, I would always start I'm a big believer in a paddle tail. I love fishing, right. fishing a paddle tail That's style good. bait. Um, but straight away you'll start to, if you're really confident that there's a fish in an area or that there should be fish in an area yeah. that's the only time that i will start to cycle through different baits and different techniques right. um, because generally speaking unless they're on a particularly off day you should get some indications on a jig head right gotcha. um, even if you're not landing fish but you're just getting a little dig yeah. or a little indication or you know tail nips it might be because your bait's too big it might be because it's falling too fast you've got too big a jig head on right. or likewise you're not getting down to them quick enough so you need a bigger jig head so right. that's when i would start experimenting and going through you know going through the motions really good but otherwise we'll start quite plain and simple nice that's it there's every chance we might snag up a few times and have to tackle up but that's the joys of learning a new venue yeah um and then hopefully as the day progresses we'll go through the different techniques and we'll have a look at um, why we're fishing a different technique as opposed to just a open jig head perfect right um i'll leave that sat down there then shall I? cool <laughs> so as far as um baits go i mean any of our slick shads, spiky shads, uh, the smaller size Xander Pros, anything's great to start with. Right. Um, and if there's two people in a boat, I would often suggest that we fish opposites. Right. So, for example, the 10 centimetre Pro shad on that rod, yep. I think is a brilliant um, pike bait and big perch bait. But if we were catching sort of, um, you know, 15 to 25 centimetre smaller perch, I think it's far too big. Yeah, too but big. it's a good idea to try to fish, if there's two of you, to try to fish two different methods, if not two methods, certainly two different colours or styles of paddle tail. Yeah. So that's a lot more rolling and um, a bigger paddle action, whereas like the slick shad, which we'll probably start on here, yeah. is a... Um, lot more of a high intensity vibration and a lot See, narrower even that like just from what i've what i've been doing i'd have a 10 gram on that just because it's yeah. a big lure big jig head yeah but you've you i mean you've got what's that three i think grams? it's three and a half yeah that's yeah it's tiny and that's, i guess that's so it falls really slowly yeah. through the water right yeah. yeah yeah i mean that was from a previous session but we'll just we'll see how it goes All right. um we've only got five foot here at the moment but out in the main flow it's sort of 10 to 12 foot so Sweet. We'll have a little look. So I think if, um, I don't know the pike scenario, so at the moment we will just start with a little finesse wire trace on. Okay. I think with the flood water we've got and the clarity of the water, a little trace isn't gonna make any odds. No. But if we start the other rod without a trace, so again, if one person is getting bites or getting a response with or without a trace, we can amend to, yeah. to suit. Perfect. Right, let's do it. Fantastic. I mean, colors wise. What um, would you do in slightly colored water? So I go, I tend to go Dark one or of, light. It's got well, to be, it's got I to tend be one to or go, tubber, isn't it? Yeah, I tend to go either very, very bright. Right. Um, you know, quite larry, quite a perch pattern, yeah. somewhat chartreuse -y, or I go jet black. Right. And I tend to miss a lot of the in-between. Yeah. Having said that, um, there is quite often a, a good rule of thumb is actually to follow the colour of the water. So fish a dark bait in dark water. Yeah. And fish a more natural, clearer bait in, in clear water. But to be honest, I think that's one great thing with lure fishing. You never know. Well, that's something someone told me earlier on. They went dark colour, or dark water, or coloured yeah. water, dark lure. And I was like, right, yeah. I've been doing it wrong for the last couple of years. Because yeah. every time I'll put on chartreuse or a yellow or an orange or something like bright and vibrant. I mean, I've had the old fish, but I'm sitting there thinking I've had two years of missing so many bites. Yeah. But I'm glad you said that. So again, we'll start, one person will start 
on a darker colour or a okay. more natural colour, one on a bright colour. But if you want to take that one, Dean. Lovely, right. I will find another one. I think what we'll do is probably just mooch up the river a little bit. There's quite a nice overhanging tree. Beautiful. We'll just um, start having a few casts, see if we don't lose too many jigs and go from there. Done it now, I'm going to chuck <laughs> it straight up the bush, you know. We'll look at... Um, right. I'm going safe to start with. Get me first. So you're literally letting it sink to the bottom, but you yep. it down. So my first How are you working these initially? My first few casts oh, would be... Hold on. There's a fish. Sit it on the drop. <laughs> 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 Who needs expert tuition? <laughs> I ain't even joking, that just took it on the drop. <laughs> Kev, that's mad. I was just about to say, would you would you crank it or just twitch it? Oh, that's a decent fish as well. Hey, dude. Hey, it's easy. That's the way we're supposed to start. He's all right. Oh, I think the uh, I think my spiky shad's just popped out. I actually bought this, ladies and gents. Bought that with my own money, <laughs> so so I don't just buy <laughs> lures. What's this, a little six centimetre spiky shad? Yep. Just look good. Great colour to start. Great action. So let's see how we got on. I was going to ask you how to work it. First cast. Mate, that's a decent, that's an handful. So it? that's a cracking fish to start with. Right, now I'm, I'm a bit of a speci angler, so I don't yep. measure them, but. But we'll have a little look, and it's nice to have the, the mat out. <clears throat> but we're 41. That's all right, isn't it? Yep. You got him? I've got him. That's an angry looking thing. Look at that. Very cool. Oh, let's just do that. So that's a great way to start the day. How big? Pound enough? Yeah, I was going to say yeah. he ain't two pounds, is he? Yeah. He's long though, isn't he? Yeah, He's he got no belly. Not, yeah, not got much of a belly on him. Wonderful. Right. Fantastic start to the day. Well Let's. done. <clears throat> Don't know the river, so it's just um, what you think, working out what I'm seeing. So I'm going to pick up a slick shad. Right. So it's the same size as your fishing. The spiky shad's got a lot more um, vibration that's built in with these little nodules that come off the side. Yeah. Uh, one of my favourite perch baits. I mean, they're brilliant. Are they really? So that will fall Good. slightly slower than this. This will fall just because of its aerodynamic profile a little bit faster. Yeah. yeah. Um, what colour is that? This is hot olive. UV and, and hot olive. And would that be a colour that you'd definitely get in your box? Uh, yes and no. I do use it not as much as I use some of the others. I would prefer this sort of more brighter colour. This is a UV perch. Right. Um, but it's like I think we said right at the start, it's good just to fish two opposites, yep, just okay. to see, because on a given day, they much prefer one than the right, other. Right. But just like yourself, and just putting a couple of turns on, yep. and just letting it just fall through the water would be my first few few runs through. Right, so you're using the reel to actually lift it. I'm actually jigging it with a rod. Uh, a bit, bit of both, so you can... Right, okay. You can use both, and certainly if we're fishing up the river like we are now, yep you can help to slow your fall down by lifting the rod as, the, as it's yep. coming towards you. So I think we'll just try and cover a little bit of it in and around this tree. As you can see yourself exactly where you've gone <laughs> now, there's a little bit more of a slack over there, yep. which um, if these areas aren't accessible from the bank, I would think it's probably stuffed with fish right up tight to the, to the margins. And then I know that some of the locals like to fish, so that could be our first sign that we might need to go over to um, to something a bit more weedless. I've only put one cast in there on five grams. Yeah. and um, So there is a little bit of a technique, doesn't always work, but if you try pinging the line so that you're putting it under a lot of tension and then letting it go quite violently, the jig head itself kind of rocks. Right. So it can work its way out of the yeah. snag, really, if I'm honest. That feels pretty solid. I've seen it and tried it, but every time I've tried it, I feel like I've been really buried. <laughs> I 
Yeah, unfortunately, I think that one's a bit of a lost cause there. Oh, Jesus. Yeah. So that is, unfortunately, the first jig I'd lost of the day. Part but that's part and parcel of, um, of lure fishing. So um, I'm not that great a fan of the Texas rig, but I really do like fishing a Cheb rig, which we can fish right. weedless. So I think we'll um, set one of them up and might even have one set up that I can then show you the difference in how it looks. Yep. And it's slightly different presentation because the, um, the Cheb weight isn't connected directly to the hook. Yeah. It's a, got a little bit more um, sort of articulation to it. So it yep. does provide a slightly different presentation. Um, no doubt you've used it in the sea for some of your bass fishing. Uh, well. Yeah, I, I do use a lot of lure, like weedless stuff for the bass fishing. Not so much for weed, but for the rocks yep. side of things. But the Cheb is something that I've actually, I'm actually waiting on my order to come through. Yep. So it would be very interesting to see how you set it up and stuff. Because that yep. would be something quite new to my armory, but something that I definitely feel like would be with some of the stuff and some of the venues that I fish with the weed and stuff, I definitely feel like it's something that I need in, I need to be a little bit better at. I feel like I need to be a little bit better at this fishing as well at the moment. One uh, chuck wonder. That's the trouble, we're catching one first cast. Would you, right, so we did, we caught one first cast. Yep. Right. At, we probably had another 15 chucks. Yep. No signs. Yep. There are signs of fish there. Yep. What would be your change of method or just change the si uh, size or the colour of the lure? Uh, first of all, I just changed the size or the colour. Right. So potentially, um, I know that some of the locals say it's slightly smaller, but I would quite often go just for a few casts, slightly bigger. Right. So the next size up, maybe a seven or a nine centimetre. Yeah, I've got six. Six add might be perfect. And you believe that there's fish there, or like we've already seen, you've had one fish. Yeah. If you go through the sizes quickly, yeah. and then the next thing is then your technique. So we might pick up a drop shot where we right. can fish a lot slower yeah. and hold the bait where, those, where we think zone. those fish are more. Yeah. Um, for me, I wouldn't pick up a drop shot. I'd pick up like a crankbait, so like a hard bait yeah. where we can really try and fire them up, try and get them active. It's a much faster way of fishing. Right. Judging by the fact I've already lost one bait, it's probably a bit of a costly exercise that you might lose a crankbait or two. Right, okay. um, but I just really do prefer the power fishing side of it myself. Right, so, okay. But this is the um, the weedless setup with a cheb. So I've actually got that on a clip there, which just because we've got a wire trace on. Right. Right. Okay. But I'll just change that over. Um, right, well, yeah, I'm gonna why I'm not gonna change, change to a bigger, a bigger or a smaller <coughs> bait? I'm going to have a whiz through, see what I can find. Put That's there. incredible. There you go. Same spot. Yep. One more cast. Oh, look oh, at that. Oh, bloody hell. Get him in. That's a cracker. <laughs> and if you look, I already can't see that bait. That's out of sight. He smashed it. That's absolutely wild. And do you that. know what? I would never, in a swim like this, where there's a bit of flow and you do have to work them quicker, before you said that and gave me the confidence to put it on, I would never have put a, like, a, a creature bait on and worked it that quick. Yep. Albeit, I will say, <laughs> you had it on the drop like the first one. Yeah, but so it's... It was the change of lure that was definitely the one. You've probably put 15 or 20 casts into Easy. that same spot. Easy. With no reaction. And straight away, first cast on a change <coughs> of presentation. So it's, we did do two things there, though. You've changed presentation and colour. Oh, so I did, then, yeah, yeah, then I did, what yeah. we sort of would move on to doing is trying to work out which of it it was that created the bite, whether it was going darker on a colour. So what I'll do, I've so just So would put, you only do one thing at a time? No, no, if you do something like that, but it's always just trying to remember, thinking, actually, I haven't just changed my bait. I've changed the colour of my bait as well. Yeah. So it's the presentation we've changed. So what I'll do is I'll come through with a dark shad. Oh, yeah. about to lose a whole box of... Got half a bush here, mate. I wouldn't, I wouldn't... I'll come through with a dark shad and see whether that makes any difference yeah. or whether it is actually that presentation, which is then the creature bait. But again, I would never have worked that creature bait anywhere near as quick. Yep. Brilliant. There we go, Dean. Uh, that's, a, that's a Norfolk Brawl's personal best, ladies and gents. <laughs> Bucket of water, wherever you like. <laughs> I have all of two perch under my belt, but that's a that's a belt, mate. That's actually similar length to the first one, but a bit fatter. Oy. I'll tell you what, I might have to get my pliers out. I've He's got a feeling we oh, might need got, them, yeah. I've got me I've got the pike ones in there. Where are you? Where are you? Come here, mate.
Oof. Oh, he's walloped that. He has absolutely smashed it. Let me pull that slightly tighter. Got it. Got it? Yeah. There you go. Good lad. Star. Let's get that one. Hey, Lovely wait. fish. <clears throat> Here we go. All right. Stay there. I just want to have a little look. So look at you. Look at him. Peas in the pod. There we go. Change of presentation. Wallop. Thank you very much, man. Lovely fish. Very cool. Very, very cool. Clean fish. Tell you what, it's quite dark, isn't it? Yeah. Well, I mean, you've only got about a foot of visibility. And if you think, so when we said right back at the start about the co colour to water, yeah. I do think if you follow that pattern of matching the actual colour of the water, Much you're not going to be that, that far off because no. that's pretty similar. That's mad. Fantastic. So what I'm going to do is put a darker coloured shad on yeah. and have a few casts and just see whether we can start to get a pattern together of colour or presentation. Hopefully you'll get a few more on there and then we know it's more of a creature bait sort of um, presentation that we're looking for. Got to say, I've had this in the box for a while now and it's the first time I've actually put it on with confidence. Well done. Lovely jubbly, lovely jubbly. Because when you watch some of the videos, you, you, you do think to yourself, oh, I've got to do this and I've got to do that, and it gets a bit overwhelming. Yeah, I think that's um, one thing I love about it, is there's no, there's no set rule. So no. Just... Everything is worth a try, <laughs> and Fucking hands are not working. <laughs> every day is completely different. Yeah. So what works today might not necessarily be the best thing for tomorrow. No, that, that's, do you know what, I mean, I, I say that a lot in, in some of my fishing, um, you know, but generally there are things that you have to do. Yeah. Oh, oh definitely had a, definitely on had the, a tap there. On the fluoro creature. On the fluoro creature. Yeah. So maybe it was the creature rather than the colour. Yeah. So that critter you're fishing has got much narrower appendages and claws on yeah. it, whereas this, um, you know the other thing I did on that one is I actually I was trying to tease it slower. Yep. Well, I was just I was trying to leave it in the zone a little bit longer. Chuck one tighter, mate. Go on, you're all right. Sure. Yeah. The flow's taking it in there anyway, isn't it? Short, but that's. I mean, that is one thing I love about lure fishing is it's quite a social game as well. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. The first time you take a general course angler out lure fishing they're like, oh i don't want to cast that or oh, uh, uh, and they don't quite know where to cast or what to do and you're like mate just cast over me it don't matter it's just um you know it's i think it's quite social that was definitely definitely a nice bang one of them unmissable bites that you miss <laughs> so i think we'll do in a minute as well um is probably set two completely different rods up. I think yeah. we're set a drop shot up. Have you fished a drop shot at all? Have you tried uh, do you know, drop shot right, fishing? Badly, yep. badly to the point where I've just tied a lead on the bottom of a bit of fluoro and, and a hook halfway up sort of yep. thing. So like probably, probably like most people, you know, and yeah, and uh, uh, badly. And I've probably overworked it as well because I've actually spoke to someone recently who does a lot of drop shotting and I'm like, yeah, I definitely did it wrong. Yeah, because it, I wasn't doing it successful. Albeit my PB in the UK was caught in a drop shot, so I, I didn't do something wrong on that cast. But I feel I feel like that was more luck than anything. Well, certainly we can run through quickly how to set a drop shot up, and um, I do feel like just keeping it in that that kill zone area. Yeah. the drop shot might be more effective than fishing the jig. Yeah, um, I feel like once you get a rod length off the tree. Yep. It's the flow that's stopping you yeah. from presenting the bait. So we can obviously counteract that by going slightly heavier with the jig head. Yeah. Um, but then you start to get a much faster fall. Sometimes that's good, but yeah. I always like the slowest fall possible 
um, seems to generate the more bites. Do you know, I've fished with two very experienced lure anglers in the last month, and both of you have said that. Yeah. Both of you have said that. It's all about the fall. That, that hang it's time, the that. longer yeah. the better, in my, in my mind. There is days when the faster the fall, you need that fast fall just to generate a bite, just to, yep. um, like a reaction strike. Yeah. So I think this will set up a drop shot, and I will also do the complete opposite to that and try and pull a crankbait through, which is a hard bait, so a hard yep. um, um, lipped bait that's just going to make lots of noise, lots of vibration, lots of chaos, um, but it is generally quite a fast way of fishing. Yeah. And we'll just see if we can build up more of an idea of what it is that's working today. Do you know, know? what I'd like? If I'm honest, because I learned by seeing, I'd like you to chuck the drop shot for me and just have a couple of chucks, because yep. then I and talk me through it, and then I can see it, yep. and then and then from this moment on, I will always yeah, fish the drop shot yeah. well. Yep. Does that make sense? Yeah, definitely. I remember someone teaching me how to handbrake a car into a parking <laughs> space. Now, this is random, but quite a cool story. I did a stunt day, right, and I said, I said, look, you're talking me through all these like this, that, and the other. I said, but if you if you sit me in the car and show me how to handbrake into a parking space, I'll get it much quicker. Yeah. And after him showing me one time, I handbraked into a parking space that was two foot bigger than the car. So a foot either side. Like, and I mean like a glove, like, a, like an Ace Ventura moment. Straight it was mega. In. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But only because I saw it. So we've um, chucked an open jig head. Yep. It was pretty successful. You haven't lost any. I've lost one. Tried a, um, a weedless chab. Yep. Um, slightly different lures, slightly different presentations, but most of the fish by the looks of it have come to like a, um, a creature bait of some sort yeah. or a darker coloured bait. So I think if we can hold a bait in the sort of kill zone for a bit longer, yeah. then um, we might have more chance of a fish or two. And you reckon this is the best way of doing it? This definitely will hold us out there. If we yeah. need to up the size, I think I've only got three and a half to five grams on. I'm not sure on that one at the moment. Right. Um, but this is just a small drop shot. It's a, I think it's a size six drop shot hook. Right. Um, started just with, I don't know, 12, 14 inches. Right, this would be my, uh, this would be the things that I'm thinking people that haven't done this before need to ask is, Yep. weight depends on flow, how far out and all that stuff, I'm assuming, Correct. so that's yep. quite simple. What would be your go-to start with regard to distance or, or how much, how high off the bottom? There's a couple of variations, but as a right. rule of thumb, I would start at about that, 12 right. to sort of 14 inches. Yep. We've got a bit of a tail left over okay. so we can go a bit longer. Yep. We can always just, the drop shot weight has got, um, it's sort of pinched together swivel. So okay. you can just unclip it and move it up and down slightly so right. it makes it very adjustable really. Yep. Um, but there's lots of, when you get really into it, if you're fishing at range, you want to be fishing longer right. because your the line's going to line be at an angle. angle. Yep. And if you're fishing closer, obviously you can get away with shallower. But as a rule of thumb, it's a good place to as start. As a rule of thumb, you kind of want your lure, regardless of distance and stuff, about, about a foot off the about deck, foot off somewhere the around there. So okay. it's just, you want to be in their eye line as much as yeah. you can, you know. So if the fish are really active and they're right up in the water, we've fished long two or three foot drop oh, right, shots, okay. but yeah. they need to be active. So I think that's going to hold us in, in the kill zone. And um, certainly one of us will fish this. Yep. Um, I'll have a few chucks to start with and just show you how I would fish it. It's fishing it and working it that yep. I'm, I'm sure I've done wrong. But this is another thing that I'm actually quite surprised at. You're, you're, you're using a creature bait as well. Yeah. Because every time I've used it, I've just tried to use the smallest little shad thing that I could, or I've chopped stuff down. Yeah. Um, so I suppose you, you can use anything. If yeah, you, well want. you saw when we dropped a bait over the side earlier, all the appendages yeah. start moving. So yeah. if you imagine we're holding that in the flow, yeah. those little claws and the little bits are just moving. And yeah. when you're starting to scale down, this is the new Fox Mini Critters, but yeah. when you're starting to scale down in size of lures, I think we've got to start imagining that they're insects in the water and yeah. that's what the perch are chasing. So right, those yeah. insects aren't necessarily diving about, they're just milling in the water and that's what the fish at the perch are then feeding on. Right. When we're fishing with shads and we're fishing quite fast, it's like they're chasing bait fish, but um, perfect on a drop So shot. if you like fishing aggressively, this is your worst nightmare. Absolutely, <laughs> but it catches fish and this is just, um, it's a perfect scenario where there's a little bit of an eddy, there's a little bit of a slack, yeah, yeah. and we've both got the feeling that those fish are just on that edge, and once we come a bit further out, we're a bit out of the zone. Yeah, so. you get the odd little sign, don't you? Yep. And then as soon as you get to the edge of the tree, nothing from here to there, so. so right. 
I think we'll do a bit of both, okay. which we said right at the start, it's really good to fish two different techniques. Yeah. So as much as I hate this, it is a great method. But it I want to a lot of fish. I want to see you work it a couple yep. of times so that I can in my mind go away and be better at it myself. So, so um, we'll fish that and also, um, which a lot of people don't necessarily fish in these sort of scenarios. We're quite close to the bank. Yep. You haven't got a great cast. Um, you haven't got a long retrieve, but a, a crankbait. So this is just a, yeah. a, a hard bait with a, this is a Salmo Hornet. Um, we'll dive up to about 12 foot. I would think with this flow, we're probably only gonna get seven or eight foot, which would be perfect. Um, it's a really aggressive, loud, noisy bait. Right. If we've had a couple of fish and there's fish that we think there's more fish there, but they've not necessarily feeding, this is a bit of a do or die scenario. Right, okay. It will either fire them up yeah. and we'll start to catch either just on this or on both, because once those fish get aggressive really? and they get moving. So you can use this to sort of foam them into a frenzy? Yep, oh, definitely. Right. And then somebody else can be catching on a different presentation, but because the noise and the aggression has just fired them up from being a bit lazy and a bit mooching about, yeah. um, other days you put one through and they just basically stick two fingers up at you so we're not interested right, okay. um but i love this style of fishing and this is my my more fishing you know a lot faster a lot more aggressive but we'll run through both of them and we'll see which which gets us a bite this would... one's a much more simple way of fishing isn't it yeah chuck it out crank it back it's kind of a lot oh, more, is it? It is oh, a lot of like there you go there's the newbie yeah, there's, <laughs> there's lots of you know again it all comes down to once you get into the finer elements right if you're fishing too heavy a braid, you won't get this as deep as it can go. Right. If you're fishing lighter braids, it cuts through the water easier. It will go deeper. Whether you fish a clip on it or don't fish a clip on it will depend on how much uh, articulation and action right. it's got. Okay. So there is lots and lots of different um, Aspects. improvements yeah. that we can do and just different variations that we can do to either get the bait to fish deeper, slower, you know, shallower. Right. Gotcha. So, it does, it all comes down to little little extras on, on all aspects of lure fishing. Yeah. Um, I think gone are the days of throwing a spinner out and just burning it back That's in. That's why I'm here. You know. That's why I'm here. So let's have a little look and right. see okay. what we can do. So we've had a couple of little casts with the drop <sighs> shot. Typical cab for got snagged up straight away, but Dean's gonna have a little play on the drop shot. I'm going to throw a few crankbaits about and we'll um, just see if we can fire them up. It's just gone a little bit quiet. I feel yeah. like we're not really activating them, not really sort of getting much action, but there's still clearly fish there. So we'll see if one or the other technique works. If it doesn't, we'll give these a rest and we'll go and have a much further one up. You haven't really had any more inquiries on the drop shot. So I think we'll just push the boat in a little bit closer, let you get right up tight with the drop shot. Ironically, then, it's a disadvantage being on the, you'd be better off on the bank here, wouldn't you? Because the flow would take you, <laughs> the flow would get you exactly where they're hiding. Yeah. So actually the boat is great for getting here, but you'd rather be fishing from the bank in this particular spot. Yeah, so we'll just push up and get in a little bit tighter. We, so, you know, initially we don't want to sit right on top of them, potentially spook them. Um, but we'll just move in a bit tighter, try and fish a bit closer and a bit slower with the drop shot. And then I think we'll move back on up the river and, um, <coughs> and see if we can find another fish yeah, holding absolutely. area. Well, it's been far from a disaster to start with, has it? We've had a couple. Oh, mate, that looks so good. Are they the best biscuits in the world? Hobnobs. No, <laughs> hobnobs. <laughs> like the, and the only, the only way I would change this, right, from an original, original digestive is the digestive with dark chocolate on top. <laughs> that in a red hot coffee. <laughs> Any other biscuit. I do like hobnobs as well. Yeah. Do you? I'll, I'll, be, wrong with you. I'll be honest, I'll eat hobnobs any biscuit. Hobnobs aren't as but... much of a dunker as they are, Grant. <laughs> I double dunk these. Like, I've got a big round wide coffee cup and I will double dunk a whole, like two whole ones and stick them in. It's, oh, it's the greatest pleasure when you get to my age. <laughs> <laughs> you take the wins when you get them. Would you say 
the fish we had from here yesterday would have spooked them for today? Um, you know, if, you, if you find a spot Generally like, not, because I don't think we caught enough. I mean, we, <laughs> we, we, had, a, we had a couple, but it was quite, it was still quite hard fishing. Yeah. I had to, <clears throat> just had that feeling that there was more fish here and we've probably missed quite a few of them. Yeah. So I would think, again, we don't know the venue and looking about, there's water everywhere. They could easily yeah. move, you know, there's another tree or another bend. And um, I think just as we found a few yesterday, it's worth certainly having half an hour. If we start at the bottom here and yeah. work our way up that sort of bush line. Would you say they're territorial? It's quite uh, a territorial species of perch, wouldn't you say? I think they stay in certain areas, yeah. yeah. So There's like something you, that attracts them. If we caught a couple and we disturbed them yesterday, they'd push up and down this bank, but yeah. they wouldn't necessarily just move to I don't think they're going to go different. 500 yards away, yeah. No, that's, that's sort of my... Even on still waters, that's my sort of um, experience as well, that they'll generally come back to a similar area. That's the day they... That's the kid, eh? I think you had one from their first cast yesterday. I can't remember. On the back end. I do feel like we'll be better once we get up yeah, the front I of I it. Yeah, I chucked it right, at left of the bush. Oh, bit. did you? I think so, yeah. I had a couple of chucks in there. I remember I, I, I stuck it up the bush. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I mean, I that was early on. I had a PB there. I had a, a message right oak tree. <laughs> Absolutely mad. What did I just say before that went over? That was, that's the kiddie. I was like, they're not there, because otherwise we'd have had one with two chucks. And literally a second after I said it, <laughs> very tentative bite though, mate. Oh, he's all right. He's a lover cracker. He's all right, mate. He's well all right. Oh, oh bloody he hell. Is. He's a good one. Bloody hell. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, oh, you're learning some, quick, Steve. Some, learning some, very amazing quick. what a day's coaching does Look for you. Look at that. Amazing. I ain't even joking. Literally a second before that, I said, if, that, that, come out. if, that, doesn't, if that doesn't go over, they're not there because I stuck a, a bright yellow one in there a couple of times real tight. Yep. And I felt like on yesterday's fishing, that would have gone over if they wanted it. So I've changed to a darker one, much more natural colour. Um, and I just said a second before it, I said, if that don't go, they ain't here. Um, Perfect but I also cast. said about two minutes before that, I've got an absolutely different level of confidence in creature baits now, because I've always just gone for shads, but what, I've learned, that, what I've learned yesterday is certainly... Yeah. Mate, I'm so happy with that. So happy with that. Oh, mate, he's, he's well all right. He is what we call, what we call down my way as a proper one. Come here, you. Ooh. He's... He's an angry one. To the to the nose of the mat or to the first line? Just to the first line, yeah. Okay. Yeah, 42-ish. Yeah. Yep. 40, yeah. Lovely fish. Isn't he? Yeah. He's got some shoulders on him. He's got big, this is, this big, is my big favorite fish bit. in the winter. This is my favourite bit here. These little iridescent yep. things on. Oh, stay there. Stay there. Right. Look at that. Stay there, you. Stay there, behave. How's that? Cheers, what mate. Cracker. Kev, I've learnt so much, mate. Um, yeah, mate, that. You picked it up really quick. You said you didn't really fish the creature baits. You caught on creature baits yesterday and today. Change of colour, as we were discussing yesterday, once a colour doesn't work, to go to a different colour. Great cast, and then first cast, bang. What a beauty. Our warrior, isn't he? Yeah. Come here, darling. Just gonna put you back. Head up straight. Yeah. There you go. Straight back down to the depths. Angry. Awesome. What I love about them. Well done, mate. I'm, I'm buzzing. Well done. Now. That's what we needed. Well, there still might be another couple, like you might said, when you unlock the key. Yep. And it was that change of colour. Yeah. I think we're sort of narrowing it down to the darker, more natural colours. Is mad, there. isn't it? Yeah. Absolutely mad. Right. I bet if you pulled a paddle tail through there, you'd probably wouldn't. You'd think there was no fish there. 
Really? Because probably because we're fishing so slow on the bottom. Yeah. <clears throat> to present a paddle tail like that would be yeah. really difficult and probably I mean I might do it just to prove a point I know you ate it you yeah. ate it but I, I really like the finesse side of a drop shot yeah well yeah. the drop shot I haven't that's yeah. the one thing I wanted to do more today because yeah. I've really not got a lot of experience there but just like working those creature baits super slow like almost can't work them slow enough I like that I you know what I mean? think, yeah yeah because the bites just seem a little bit more electric I think from my logic of thinking about it is if you've got a crayfish and yeah. a perch finds it, which they clearly feed on, yeah. they've got two options. They go at it slowly and possibly get nipped by a, a, a claw yeah. or they go in and nail it. And I think that's why the bites are just like done. Yeah. Um, but that's wicked. Cool. Right. Let's get another one. Let's get another one. Exactly. Yeah. There's one. <laughs> yes, mate. <laughs> There's one. It's just yes. that different presentation. Isn't it mad? So I've gone from the drop shot over to a cheb and it just a few little dinks. That's mad. That is mad. That isn't was it? quite far off the bush. I had one little hit that I thought I missed and carried on out into the flow and it's just a tiny little dink. Yeah, mine weren't like savage. In you come. There we go. Now they oh, ain't, they ain't just turned up, have they? No. They've been there all the time, and the only difference is just unlocking is, is that we've key. Gone, yeah. I took that off, which I had a couple of knocks on, no fish, but I had a couple of knocks on yesterday, so I thought, definitely there, and they're definitely interested, and I stuck that on. And then you've just caught on... Uh, I've got the green pumpkin on, which, which is sits, dark back and a little bit green on the belly, but... Um, still much darker. Still a lot darker, yeah. Mad, isn't it? And, um, yeah, I... And we've probably missed only got, one what, 18 inches in. of visibility? Yeah, 18 inches. I missed one tight in, and I don't know whether it's the same fish, it was a, just a little dink. And I was quite far away from the tree by then, and it's just... You said it yesterday, good. unlock the key? Yeah. Well done, man. We got a couple. That's what we needed. That's a couple on the board. Yeah, buddy. Yeah, buddy. <coughs> you can show them that rig in a minute. Get casting again. <laughs> I've, got to, I've got to pull it on anyway, oh, right. so. You are joking me. <laughs> <laughs> That's Straight ridiculous. Away. That doesn't feel like a bad fish, mate. That is absolutely mad. Every single time we it change like colour. Good one. That is, if that's not a pike. I was going to say it's holding well. Oh, bloody it's hell. holding really well. I'm getting a little bit nervous. Good perch. Oh, yes. a nice one. This is a decent perch, that. Back one's going on. <laughs> <laughs> bloody hell. That is absolutely mad. Please stay on. Please stay on. Please stay on. Jesus Christ. Oh, he's Christ. a fighter. Please stay on. He's done it. <laughs> That's... I don't know if it's as big as the other one. I don't care, but... Don't think it I is, I ain't even joking. We've had two changes of colours on them creature baits and both times first cast. And um, since we caught... The last two, yep. which were two we on the balance, bait. must have had 20 chucks. Yep. <sighs> yeah, it's one I thing. I need more colours in my box if yep. that's the case. It's one thing we've discussed a lot over the, yesterday and today is that change of colour. Yeah. We know the presentation's right, and just that change of colour makes the world a difference. I literally, I dunked it in the water and I said to you, Sam, didn't I? I dunked it in the water and I was like, do you know what? We've got 18 inches of visibility, but that is so dark, you can't see it six inches under the water. And it's gone in and it's, and again, I'll say it again. You can't tell me that's just turned up. No. That's been there, sat there, looking at yep. all our gear. 
Lift it slightly, careful. Yeah, it is. Yeah, it is. Right, so it's touching the water. Mate, I'm learning so much because I've always been, I've always been reluctant to change because I don't know whether I'm changing from a good one to a bad one. And now I'm. It's the right way up now. When you come out with people that are changing regularly, you get the confidence to just do it. You know, I've got no issues changing hook baits in barbel fishing, but. But I've always been a bit reluctant with lure fishing because I didn't really know what to go from. But now I'm. Can will change after he catches with a lure. Anyway, change purposely to see if I can catch on a different one. Yeah. Really? Yeah. Well, we've definitely got the lure. Yeah. But they just well, seem to be. After that now. Again. I've, I've run out of colours. I've got no more colours. <laughs> <laughs> I've got no more. Lovely fish. Yeah, mental fish. Some power. Healthy, aren't they? Yeah, yeah. He, was, uh, he was putting up a right old tussle. Yeah. There we go. It's been a tough two days, really. Yeah. But we've um, done all right today, though. I think we've done really well today. I think we... Um, would, you, would you say that what we've, what we've caught today was on the basis of what we learnt yesterday? Certainly some of it. Obviously, location was one thing. Yeah. But um, presentation was another. Yeah. And, um, you know, realising that they definitely wanted creature baits more than, like, a paddle tail or a fish-type bait. Yeah. Um, and I think you learned a bit about the changing colours. I've just had a lot more confidence in being able to just change colour for this, like if we ain't had a bite after four or five chucks, just have a go. Yep. Um, and it's, it's been a big thing today, but after yesterday I've had the confidence to do it. Yeah. Because I've definitely fallen into the trap of having a bite on one colour and then staying on it way too long for there on, there on after. I think um, the fish can still be sat there. And as soon as you show them something different, 100%. they just react straight away. And as you've seen, I think once or twice, you've had it first cast, twice, bang, straight away. Yeah. So it's, um, yeah, it definitely makes a difference. And it's worth just spending two seconds just to change your colour and yeah. just carry on. So um, I think we'll just work along this, this bank and probably head back to where we've had one or two for the last hour or two and see if we it's can. There's got to be another bite in there, isn't there? Let's hope so. Cool. Right. My hands must be getting cold, Dean, so yours must be bloody freezing. Mate, <laughs> I don't get cold hands anymore. <laughs> Suffered way too much. But look at that, it's, it's sort of testament to how it's gone. We haven't had lots and lots of bites, but where we've found one, we've generally found... Well, we've just had two in two casts. I think it's been, um, it's been a great two days, Yeah, a tough two days. I fishing. cannot tell you how much I've learned. Mostly, it's just confidence to actually have the bottle to try stuff. Yep. Um, but I mean, I've certainly noticed how your retrieve technique has changed over the two days. You know, you've slowed everything down a lot. Um, some of it might also to be to do with the fact we swapped the rods around a bit. 100% the gear's made a difference. 100%. Because I was trying to fish with gear that would do several things. And I guess the one thing I'm taking away is that you, like lure rods are like golf clubs. If you play a whole round of golf with a seven iron, you're going to be great from mid range, but you're not going to be great from long range. You're not going to be great from around the green. You yep. have to have the right tools. Yep. And um, yeah, the lighter rods, softer tips, definitely made, made it so much easier just to work the lures. Because the one thing I have been doing, I'm absolutely convinced now looking at it and using your gear, is with the heavier gear and the lighter, and the lighter lures, I've probably been working the lure way too much. Yeah, and it puts a lot of action in. Yeah. And you've got to really force it, which a heavier rod is 
making you force that yeah. bait a lot more. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I mean, the th we've mostly used the three to 14 grams Terminators, TI Pros, um, the Prisms, but I think for this style of perch fishing that we're doing, it's ideal. Oh, perfect. Yeah, absolutely perfect. I it's think that's um, the difference. That's one of the reasons why I've been able to present a lure better. Do you, uh, do you recognise which one's yours? Because they're both so exactly the same. in a pod, but that's how perch fishing should be. You find a little shoal of them and there should be a couple of them. Well, yeah, I'll grab this one because I'm, I'm convinced my one's this one because my one had stripes. <laughs> there we go. Might not look that big, but that's four pound. Trust me, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Thank you very much. There we go. Angry little bugger. If yours was four, mine's five. Yeah, definitely. I'll give you five pound all day long. But um, some great fish in this last couple of days. Most of the fish, to be honest, have been a lot bigger than this, as you've seen, but um, a great way to end it. Well done, mate, and thank you. Thank you very much. It's been a pleasure. Top man.